What's happening guys? Chris VA Travels and I'm going to visit the USS Albacore submarine here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, tickets are $11. There's a museum inside and then you can uh, walk inside the submarine. So, some pretty big propellers out here. And there it is, built in the 1950s. And it's the first submarine that was designed to run specifically underwater. Uh, previously, I guess, German U-boats and whatnot were actually surface vehicles that could go underwater. So, pretty cool. 569, the Albacore. I was trying to see where the periscope was coming uh, out of the top, but I, I don't see one. Yeah, entrance is down here. Okay, so inboard profile. Uh, I see a couple batteries. Is that the, uh, uh, that's the uh, intake scoop. Hmm, oh, there's the crew quarters right there, mess hall. All right, so here we go. My first time on a submarine. Uh, all right, sleeping quarters right here. Inboard profile. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I'd sleep feet first on that, on that end. Boy, you know it's smelting, smelting here after a few weeks. <laughs> Um, escape trunk. Uh, that's how you go out to the top. And more bunks over here. I think I need to walk down there. Be kind of more of the same. Air conditioning valve. Annex fan, uh, passageway lights, See, I guess you can seal that thing shut. The wardroom pantry, a little sink here, and you're allowed to touch so it doesn't open sugar, coffee. <laughs> fridge napkins cups and uh, statter room this is where the uh, these are a little bit more private a little bit more room in there water room okay here's kind of the uh, the water room Kind of a conference area, looks like. Um, watch movies, play cards. Good place to hang out a phone. I'm not sure where that would go. Battery scanner. Yeah, okay, officers, statter room. So yeah, they've got a little bit bigger, obviously, bunk. They've got their own little sink. bigger little closets and uh... small space behind the wardroom is the ship's office here the ship's yeoman or administrative assistant maintains the ship's records and files below this deck is the forward battery where there are 250 battery cells that weighed about a thousand pounds each this and the second battery located under the crew's mess provided the energy for lights heat air conditioning cooking for battery for backup circuit breaker the water during Albacore's third phase conversion, radio room in here. Extern, a special high capacity silver zig battery. Keep was out. Heard that. This was the fastest submarine in the mid 60s. Okay, showers. I was wondering. I would hate for that thing to break down. Captain would have be in trouble. Oh, showers, yeah. Okay, all right, okay. I remember when we were going for the submerged speed record 
for the first time. We had gone to maximum power when the main battery circuit breaker in the board battery. All right. So here we are, Portsmouth Harbor. All the lights went out. It was a period of about eight seconds when we couldn't see our instruments. Imagine driving down the highway at 30 miles. Oh, what's this? Uh, some sort of uh, receiver transmitter, sonar, yeah. All kinds of fuses and switches. Okay, here's the uh, oh, here's the uh, periscope. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can see outside. Oh, all right. So yeah, you can communicate back with the other room. It looks like. Uh, CB over here, some sort of pressure, I don't know what that is, hydraulic motors, I hear some whale sounds. <laughs> Over here, a gyro compass. Help keep you on course. Some sort of, not sure what that is. Uh, RF receiver controls, uh, tuning IND control. And looks like another sonar, a couple of them. Probably what it sounded like when it was underwater. Saltwater depth to keel. Yeah, another phone. Alright. Oh, alright, galley. Your oven over here. Fried dinner and a blender. <laughs> Okay. Scullery. Okay, so play some uh, bad gaming, some checkers. Mm, all right. And uh, yeah, mess cruise mess. Eating underwater. Boy, these are super cramped. Wow, my shoulders barely even uh, fit through here. Four people. Wow. Pause and read this real quick. All right, so only 18 men could fit in here at a time and they would uh, rotate three shifts each getting 15 minutes I'm not sure why you need so many phones um, all right another sink and yeah okay another bathroom and yeah, another shower kind of a mirror right there I'm not sure what that uh Now we get claustrophobic on here. On both sides are sound isolated rooms for the diesel engines. Uh, and diesel these engines back engines here. Turn generators that produce the electricity to drive the main motors, 
charge the storage batteries this and must provide be service it. power for lights, hot water, cooking, and other housekeeping functions. These lightweight aluminum engines had a history of frequent breakdowns. Uh, One consideration for retiring Aldecor was the cost of either installing new engines or starting up a long dormant production line to make additional repair parts. Above your head, between the two engines, uh, another one. Yeah, two engines. After escape trunk. This trunk served the same purpose and functioned the same way as the one in the bow compartment. Located just after the escape trunk is an area known as maneuvering, and at its center is the propulsion cubicle. The cubicle was the watch after station escape of the main trunk. power okay. electricians. It there was we go. Oh, my camera the won't. Main generators oh. or the battery was applied to the main motors. Lieutenant Hunter. I was in maneuvering during one of our deep there it is. when I heard a crackling sound and saw smoke come out of the cubicle. Electrician Tony Zimbar secured the power to the main motors and announced, Fire well, in the cubicle. If you want all the specs, there you go. <laughs> the stopped, so Tony then announced, Fire's out. When Tony tried to restore power to the motors, nothing happened. He then notified Control he was unable to answer any bells. Whatever burned in the cubicle had disabled the main motors. So here we were at test step and slowing down with no way to propel ourselves to the surface. It was a couple of heartbeats later when I felt and heard the emergency blow system activated and we started on our way up to the surface. Okay, so these are two compression desaltation units. They would create un, uh, up to 600 gallons of uh, fresh water. Oil, air conditioning, hot water pump. Quartermaster Noan Barber. After the thresher was lost, the Navy developed a more effective system for blowing ballast tanks. We were the first to try out the improved system. Our first test was from the Okay, reach the end here. At a dead stop. The boat rose rapidly to the surface. The second test was to be from 500, but the captain decided to do one from 300 instead. When the boat began, the boat immediately took a huge angle to start it. And we stay that way until we reach the surface. The engine is Alright, so the propeller, I guess. Like an extra control surface. Because we have going up to the engine. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, it for the inside of the Albacore and I'm going to uh, walk through the museum. Actually, before going to the museum, I'll take a look at this thing. Some sort of hovercraft type. Uh, the ghost. I'm sure there's going to be a plaque uh, describing this thing, hopefully. Uh, this is the back, I think. Or, I don't know, it's got propellers up on this end. after it broke the uh, speed record back in 1965 down in Key West. Over here, the USS Dolphin. Oh, here's a pretty good diorama. There's right there, the albacore. And there's a real albacore, not real, but <laughs> there it is down in Cuba and some ceremonial bottles were used to launch the vehicle. Ah, uh, yes, it was 1953. It was launched. 
a tradition that goes back thousands of years. There's some workman's clothing. And this guy, local from Portsmouth, Peter Dabala. And kind of going through post-World War II, Cold War. End of the Cold War. Tear down the wall. And Gorbachev. Uh, old radio, radio transmitter and receiver. Uh, what is this thing? Battery cell. Hmm. Okay. So all of the USS Virginia Sea Wolf. Ah, the George Washington and the Lafayette. One after Ethan Allen. And it looks like some items off there. Cigarette lighters. Thresher lost at sea. Pretty good drawing. Okay, another diorama, USS Dolphin, 1 4 scale. Uh, take a look through here. Yeah, you can see outside. Guess this thing keeps going. Oh, yeah, gift shop in there. There's one last thing to see outside. Okay, a couple more things uh, out here to look at. The uh, Memorial Garden, and I'm seeing a dolphin back here. A rescue buoy. Oh, lost boat, the New Hampshire's. Still on patrol. Um, squalls. Oh yeah, looks like that thing was lost off the coast here, Portsmouth. Wow, over 3,000 men still on board these 52 submarines. There they are, Albacore at the top. Oh wow, 78 men who are lost. And there's that thresher head inside. 129 gallant men. April 10th, 1963, off New England's continental shelf. Mm. Six men lost their lives in the country in the submarine, USS Albacore, 1944. Okay, reached the end of the line in recognition of the dedicated craftsmen of Portsmouth Naval Yard who built and maintained the finest submarines in the world, the crews who sailed them. All right, pretty nice museum. Something definitely worth checking out if you find yourself in the area. As always, like and subscribe. See ya.